Uh, Jeff does uh, uh, interactive theater. Uh, so the idea is how to engage with an audience as they are part of the experience and they themselves are transforming uh, the play as you're in it. And they're actually actors in the play and even play the central part. Uh, and this can be very similar to uh, something that you would do for social uh, web apps, for example. Uh, in the same sort of capacity, you have people who are audience members who are creating the content that is going to be viewed by other people. Um, so that was what was really fascinating to me and why I wanted to bring him in to talk. Uh, so uh, I'd like to just welcome him now, Jeff Worth. Everybody just say hi to him. So, when I tell people that I do interactive performance, because um, while some people refer to it as interactive theater, it moves way beyond just theatrical settings. Um, they're, they frequently are like, oh, okay. And it's, it's one of those things that is kind of tricky to wrap your head around if you just hear about it. So it's a little bit easier to get it if you see it. First, you need to know something philosophically that is a foundation for me. And that is the reason that I engage with this kind of work is because I want people to find their own power through a process of play. That if I do something where I force somebody to do something and they have a fantastic time, that has only conditioned them to wait for a person in a position of authority to tell them what to do, and then they will have a good time. And we've got way more advertising out there trying to convince us that if we drink this, eat this, wear this, our life will be wonderful. That doesn't make people powerful. So, I never force anybody to engage, because then it just reinforces my power. I'm far more interested in people making the choice to engage because that then, what comes out of it, they own for themselves. So, with that preface, um, I would like to do a quick demo of what an example of interactive performance looks like. But in order to do that, I would need one of you to join me. And I can tell you right now that you are not the only one whose heart has just gone a little bit faster. And that I am not going to look at you or try and coerce you. I'm going to intentionally not hold a lot of eye contact right now because that makes you feel like I'm trying to convince you that you should do it. And if nobody wants to do it, that's cool too. We can move forward. But if there is someone, and I can tell you this, if this is something where you go, oh God, that sounds kind of scary, but it might be interesting, that's perfect. The people who go, yeah, how about me? That's not necessarily a great example. I will also let you know that nudging your neighbor and going, hey, why don't you do this, frequently causes them to dig their heels in a little bit deeper. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, this is something that is only based on your personal choice. So, I'm going to hold off and see if there is someone who's game for this. Right on. <laughs> Melina. Say it again. Melina. Melina. Yeah. Jeff. So, Melina, one thing that you need to know in this is that there isn't something that you're supposed to do. Okay? A lot of times people think, okay, so what, what are you trying to get me to do? Like, you can engage in whatever way you like. Okay. Another thing to know is that how you engage, I'm going to treat as fiction. I'm not going to assume, oh, this is you. I'm going to assume this is a fictional choice that you're making. Now, it might be you, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to know. Mm -hmm. I'm going to think of it as fiction. Okay? okay? And I think everybody else will just go, oh, this is the character that she was playing, not, oh, this is who Melina really is. <laughs> okay? Okay. Cool. Um, if you, I also don't want you feeling like you need to perform. 
A lot of times people feel like, oh, I've got to be clever, I've got to be entertaining, I've got to be funny, and like, let, let go of all that stuff. It's more trusting your impulse. And if nothing shows up, you don't have to do anything. Your job is to have fun. Okay. And my job is to make it work. Okay. Cool? All right. All right. Can I borrow your foot rest for a moment? <laughs> Thanks. <clears throat> You will know when it's over because I will say seen, and that means that it's finished, okay? <clears throat> Sorry that uh, your mom couldn't be here. She really wanted to be. Yeah, I know. She told me on the phone. <sighs> It's just hard for her, you know. She feels the emptiness of the house and... Mm -hmm. And I'm away in college, yeah. It was really nice for you to come back. Yeah, this is my hometown. I love it. We love you. I feel loved. <laughs> I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. Shoot. Why did you really come back? Hmm. That's a great question, Uncle Joe. I think, I think it's because I thought my mom was going to die and I wanted to see if I was in her will. <laughs> I know, I know, it's messed up. I'm a broke college student. Are you kidding? I wish I was, I wish I was. But I am down to my last 10 bucks. I got a Greyhound to get here. Could you spare me some change while you're here? <laughs> tuition is on the rise. You know, change isn't going to help your tuition any. She's my sister. She's my mom. That's callous. I don't know what to tell you, Uncle Joe. Truth hurts. All right, well, the, yeah, <laughs> no, she wouldn't, wouldn't want me to bring it up. So do you have cash or should I just wait for another relative to come by? Nobody's going to give you money. I could become a software engineer. I heard they get paid tons. Yeah. yeah. You'd have to graduate, though, wouldn't you? I would. I would. But then I'd have to get that degree. That costs money. I don't know. I could just be a dropout. I could just get really good at coding and then just drop out of college. And uh, I could. I could start my own company, then I could get accepted to Y Combinator. I think I could do really well. She is. Your mom. So she's not going to die. She's no, not going to be at the hospital. No, she is going to die. Okay. And you're not in her will. I can help you out. I can do something, but... 
Well, that's a bummer. I think that's why you're not in her will. Hmm. It all makes sense. I'm sorry. I I'm sorry. <laughs> well, there's the Greyhound. So, do you have ten dollars that I can borrow? Thank you. Good seeing you. See you at the next family reunion. Yeah. Or at the funeral. Scene. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so, I'm curious there you are. as to um, what it is that you discovered as a result of watching that. What is there that you understand, perhaps, that you did not understand before? Or what question arises as a result of seeing that? I guess an observation, it's interesting how the two of you played off of each other, even though you did not have an agreement in advance. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That there was a foundation, even though even our characters we're not in alignment, that there was a foundation that we were both engaging in. And what was it that made it so that that actually was a co-creation? Because that is what the process of interactive work is about. It's not about just broadcast. It's not just going, here it is. It's going, here is this, what comes back, how does that change what comes forward? What was it about this that made it a co-creative process? Uh, mutual respect. You don't choose to ignore what the other has given you and choose to accept it instead. Cool. And there's a specific way in which that respect, that taking it in, was evidenced. That if there is something put forward and there is no change because of what is put forward, then it's as though that thing that was put forward didn't happen. That the key to this work is allowing things to change. So where was an example of something that you saw within this where there was a change that happened? Oh, there were lots of them. Okay. Sat down, but I doubt you were at a bus stop. But that was her suggestion. Mm -hmm. And um, just everything about the mom and the will, and you, you, you know, you just both contributed to it. And I, I'm sure at every step of the way, you were not, you didn't know where it was going. I think. And, and I have to imagine that many steps along the way, you had an idea that it was going somewhere, and then you dropped it because of what she said, and you dropped it because of what he said. And I and I think that there is a. <clears throat> There's an assumption that things get dropped. And what, what I was noticing between us is that things got modified. Mm. That if it's dropping, then it's kind of like what one half of the equation is doing doesn't carry as much value. Whereas if you still value what's this part of the equation with this part of the equation, then what you get is the intersection between those things. And you're right, there are things where it's like, oh, it seems like it's this. Oh, no, it is this. So that idea of change happening because of what one of the two sides of that equation have put forward is a foundation to the work. 
And it's a foundation of the work for performance, but it is also a foundation to just about any kind of co-creative process. Now, there's a reason that I don't start by lecturing. Because that places everyone else in a position of a consumer, just to take in what is being delivered. There's a reason that I begin with, let's play. There's a reason that when I'm talking, I'm asking you questions. Because for me, what this is tonight is going to evolve out of who you are, what you want, who I am, what I have, and what happens between those things. That can also be applied in any kind of experience design, which includes software. Anybody have a pet project that you're working on right now that I could, that I could interview you as that software, as that thing? Yeah. Like um, uh, a tic-tac-toe app? Sure. OK. All right. So I've got a tic-tac-toe app. So instead of having a tic-tac-toe app, I want you to just be the tic-tac-toe app. OK? okay. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean all you can do is say X or O, okay. but it means that you are going to speak to me from the point of view of the app. All right? Cool. Um, I'll try to, try, cool. To try to do something similar to that. All right. All right. So um, I am a, I'm a 25-year-old uh, male. Um, I've been doing some, uh, I'm a barista at Starbucks. I'm not really going much of any place. What is it about you that makes me go, be interested in you? I wouldn't normally think that way about the app, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Are you cool? Are you functional? Are you, what, what is it about y y you as this app? This app can't be beaten. Right on, right on, cool. So, th so there's a deal, so now we're starting to get, do you feel how we are already starting to define a demographic that's going to be drawn to this? Is a person who is a, oh, whatever kind of person going to be game for this kind of app? Why? Because I feel like you have to be really like, driven to try to beat the game and at least like, motivated somehow. Cool, good. So now, if, without concern for what's the actual physical design of the app, sure. uh, treating it as though it's a human being, what clothes do you wear <laughs> that manifest this idea of s somebody who can't be beaten? Uh, a cold, faceless suit that you don't even see the face. You just see a shadowy figure, and you can just make out uh, the shirt collar and a clearly intimidating tie and the rest is just in chef. OK, OK, cool. And so, so somebody who is um, who's a little bit more physically robust might not be intimidated by that, right? Well, uh, I was going off of the idea of, play, of trying to fight against the machine or fighting against the man. Cool, who cool. Will always crush you every single time. Cool. Anyway. So, so, so if I'm going to shift my character for a moment, I'm going to be some. I'm going to be a mountain biker who okay. digs like extreme games and that kind of stuff, and uh, totally into winning that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, this mountain biker sees this shadowy figure in a suit and tie and is like, Pff. "All right." So now, without having to necessarily change the suit and tie, is there something that can you tweak this? so that it's going to be either intimidating or at least challenging to this mountain biker. The sleeves are torn off of the suit, <laughs> and there are these massively beefy arms with tattoos all over them that you can just make out, and also the silhouette of horns. Cool. Um, off the, coming off the top of his head. Cool. Good. 
So right now, do you feel how we are moving out of the traditional things that we'd start to think about when we're working apps? That we are getting a sense of qualitative things that later on we can start applying to it. Now, where do I encounter you? I'm going to keep the, the mountain biking guy, all right? Okay. Where, where is it in the, in the world that I encounter you? There's the simple answer of on your phone. There's the more interesting answer of you find a piece of embedded hardware that has this on it, just randomly, um, like glued to a wall someplace. Okay. All right. Now it's it's moving back into it being the software a bit. Is this shadowy figure with beefy arms, like? Del are you delivering that through? Like right now, we're still I still treat it like metaphor, so it doesn't have to be in a digital format if you don't want it. To be. If you do want it to be in a digital okay. format, yeah. All right. So I don't have to think about whether or not I can actually physically make this thing happen. Nope. All right. Um, hmm. You find this. Uh, you find this app in your in your own head. When you start to think that you can, uh, as, you're, as you are this extreme mountain biker, yep. is getting into the place where he's hitting the wall where he can't move any further. Cool. Cool. So, yeah. So, so, I'm, so I'm having an internal, uh, I can't, like, I can't get my speed or I can't get the, that kind of stuff. Yeah. And you're, you're starting to lose your wind. Okay. Really. Awesome, awesome. And do you feel how that plays into the deal of this thing that can't be beat? Yes. Cool, good. So do I encounter this in my dreams? Do I encounter it as I'm biking as down? A, okay, and is, am I going phoom, right past this thing? Or is this... It's is this always right in front of you. Oh, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> good, so I'm, I'm starting to lose my wind and I'm seeing this apparition that's continually right in front of me. Yes. Cool. What is, the, what is the one thing that this apparition either says or does that makes me stop my bike and get off? Uh, he, you just see the beefy arm come out and just point. There's no words at all, but there's this distant sound of thunder. <laughs> cool. Cool. So now this is at this point. What's our mountain biker going to do? Like, like, like. Let's assume that that does stop this mountain biker. Sees this is like whoa. Gets off, kind of sets, the, tosses the bike off to the side, looking at this figure with a finger pointing at him. What, what do you want this user to do? Don't think of it like oh, this is I'm looking on a phone. Think of it as though it's a movie that you're watching this happen. Nice, nice. So I got this thing here, and here is where this is where the idea of let your let yourself in this case yourself as the app be changed. If like do the finger thing, if I go there and there's no change, do you feel how nothing that I did made any difference? So if I do this, and don't let yourself just become nothing, but let yourself be altered. So this, nice, nice. <laughs> what is this? Now we are going to move into translation. What, is the, what was this move that was done, and what was that grasp that just happened in terms of the actual user experience with the app? As it's, as, as, as it's shutting down anyway. Cool. And, and what, it, what takes the form of the grabbing? Like, what, how does the grabbing matter? Because a, a, a hand isn't going to be able to jump out of the screen. Right. But what is it that, like, they're going to go close this. What is it going, what is the translation of it grabbing on to them as they do the close this? 
and this is open to anybody. I don't want you to feel like it only has to happen here. Maybe somebody else. I'm thinking like when you go to pose like Chrome browsers or tabs and it asks you, oh, are you sure you want to pose this? You know, like a, okay. like a reminder, like a warning kind of thing. Cool. Like still bringing you in. Like maybe you haven't played it left yet. Yeah, maybe a taunt. Yeah, yeah. Ah, nice. Yeah. So you feel how that uses a, a device that people are familiar with, and it uses it in a way that's entertaining. Like if it was, are you sure you want to do this? It'd be like, God damn it, yes, of course I'm sure. <laughs> but if it's like, oh, it's like that. It's like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> so, so we don't have to go into the full thing here, but can you tell me some things if you were looking at the person, now let's go, the person isn't probably going to be on their bike. Can you, what is the bike metaphor for this person? What is the thing that they are engaged with? There's some sort of physical exertion going on. What is a physical exertion that actually, is it on mobile devices? Let's say it's on a mobile device. Okay. Okay. What? Uh huh. Uh, well, you can easily get into the accelerometer to know whether or not someone's moving a lot. Okay. Uh, or you can use um, some sort of embedded device like a Fitbit yep. that could let you know, like, oh, heart rates were elevated. This app can come up at that time. Cool. So you can trigger it that way. Yep. Yeah. And that, and you have a a means by which it makes them look. Right. And when they look. Or it'd be on the Apple Watch. That was actually yeah, a yeah. great place. Yeah. Because it has all that all built in. Cool. And, and then at that place, and what is something, and this is where you get to the concept of being able to elicit particular kinds of behaviors without telling them to do it. So what is a behavior? So let's say that it vibrates on their watch. Do they vibrate? I think they do. I think they do. Yeah. yeah. OK, so let's say it vibrates. It causes them to look. What does that then lead to? What do we want them to do? Don't worry about how can we get them to do it. Just tell me, what would you like this user to do? To stop and then play the app. All right. Now, do we want the user to play the app, or do we want them to close the app? Well, let's or assume to, that to he, tr he tries to close the app. OK, so, try, so there's a nice close thing, and are they touch sensitive? I don't know. Well, if we say they are. Boop. And it goes boom. And what is it that shows up when it tries to close it? A taunt. And uh, it vibrates some more. And what's the taunt say? Uh, the taunt says, like, I will seek a worthy opponent. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. That personification of the app gave a voice to speak from. Right. And it is achieving a particular kind of behavior. It's eliciting an emotional response because ultimately, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, that most people's choices are not based on logic. Really? <laughs> they are based on emotion that is justified by logic. So if you can hit them in an emotional place that is moving in the direction of where you want the behavior to be, you have achieved a lot more than going, this is going to help you enjoy your time. That's logic. Whereas if you can address, if you can make the experience engage them at an emotional level, the logic stuff they will put together for themselves. Wait, uh, worthy. Okay, we're just a minute here. <laughs> and if the, if it's a taunt, like the, a, a thing that jumps out at me, the moment I hear taunt, I see the text going like this. Do you feel how there is experience design that is arising out of the personification of the app? That it's not just, oh, text that they're static. It's got a kind of, come on, come on, there. We've also got, a, I've got a color scheme showing up for me based on what you were describing. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of things 
that start to do it. And you know how it was tricky to come up with what's the taunt? Like it, it, it was a little like, what, what would that be? Yeah. You got it, but it was a little, a really important thing with this is if you do this, um, you guys work in sprints, yeah? Okay, so doing this as an iterative process. So it's not this has to be perfect, it's this is good enough. And then test it. Try it here, try it here, try it here. And don't just try it with the people who are, you know, in, in the space with you. Go try, you want to know a really great place to get demographic on this stuff? Buses. That you get a lot of different kinds of folks and folks that you would never anticipate. And yeah, you have to be careful. But you will get such a cross-section way more than you will get at the Galleria. So just knowing that you can try, try something that's good enough to go, hmm, what if I tried this? And you can do A-B testing. You can do all the stuff that you know how to do. But you do it without being precious about this stuff. You get close enough, and then you go. So that's the process of personifying something so that you can find then things that will illuminate what, what are going to be the steps first off. And right now, we're only dealing with engagement. Right. We're not even dealing with gameplay yet. No, there's no, yeah, that, yeah we're just starting the app, really. And once we move into gameplay, it won't be like, oh, we had this engagement, now it's gameplay. Now we've got we, what the real power of any of this kind of stuff is, and that's story. Because a story is based on a journey. Just playing a game in and of itself doesn't automatically make it a journey. And if you want to have, an, so personification, that's one tool that you can use. If you want another major tool that will support you, it's the idea of what is the journey you want them to take? Do you want their journey to be to feel closer to their family? Do you want their journey to be to be able to see themselves as more fit? Do you want their journey to be to discover things that they didn't realize they would love? That means that you're starting from one place. A journey starts from one place and goes to another. If you can identify the journey that you want your user to take, the capacity to craft something that makes that happen is going to be so much better than just going, OK, so then they click this, and then they see this, and then they hear this. Those things are simply things to support the taking of a journey. And if people have a journey, that the significance of whatever that experience is will stick with them longer. All right, so there's one demo, and thank you very much. That was awesome. Is the wind blowing through it, or is it electrostatic shock? I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Cool. All right, so um, here's, what I, here's what I want to know. I want to know... I, I think that use cases are really helpful, and I think that practical application can be super helpful. So I would like to know what you want from tonight. What do you want to walk out of the door with tonight that you didn't have coming here? You've seen some of the things, a, a bit of the place that I come from for, for this kind of work. What is it that you would like for you from, from the, the knowledge base and the, the way of approaching things that I've got? You don't need to know what the thing is that I've got. You just need to know what it is that you want. Uh, I'd like to know more about how to connect with people when you don't necessarily know what their needs are. 
So are you talking about being able to connect like with a client who's asking you to build something, that kind of thing, or uh, give me a little more context Awesome. It's, it's a the broad ranging yeah, yeah. idea that's that's applicable to all human interaction, but certainly when you're in a business like ours that is collaborative and also um, relies on, on producing something somebody else actually needs yeah. and wants. Yep. Cool. All right. So um, so Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll do it this way. The idea of communication is, is most effective when it goes back and forth. It's far less effective when it just goes one way. So the art of being able to put forward something and allow room for something to come back. Um, Again, it's easier to see it than to just understand the words of it. So, uh, somebody else who's, you don't have to, do, you really don't have to do anything except be the other person with me for a moment. So, who'd, who'd be willing to do that? Cool. Here is how a fair amount of communication happens. Hey. Really good to have you here. We, uh, we're really looking forward to doing some work with you. We've seen this stuff. We've taken a look at the, your work on the website. Um, and we've read over the, the general description right. of the project. So I, I think that we've got some good people on the team. We're looking at it as probably being a bit more of a kind of exploration of the intention behind the user. And then after that, getting more into the nuts and bolts mm -hmm. of where they're connecting to the finance. Do you feel how, you feel how long I'm talking here? Mm -hmm. And do you feel what that's doing to you? Mm -hmm. This is one of the first things that can be adjusted like this. And the tool is one thought, one sentence. You, you only say one sentence and then you be quiet. And you wait for that other person to respond. Hey. Hey. It's very good to have you here. Thank you. It's good to be here. We took a look at your work on the website. Great. I'm glad you did. I, I thought you might. I'm glad, <clears throat> I'm glad to hear it, though. His name tag. <laughs> um, I think we are clear on the project that you want to do. OK. I'm curious as to the direction we're seeing we want to be exploring the intentions first. Okay, you want to explain the intentions first. Okay, that's not what, what I was thinking of. Beautiful. And do you feel, could you tell that he was going to say that's not what I was thinking of? Even before he said it, that you're a good communicator, so you do say those things. A lot of times people will think it, but you can hear it in their voice. But you won't hear it in their voice if you're talking. And do you feel how I put out something that was wrong? I said something that was not what you had in mind. And as a result, I got some course correction that makes it so that it, we're now readier to be on the same page. So uh, the idea of one thought, one sentence, we're going to go back to the last thing that you said, okay. and I'm going to introduce another tool. So okay. that's not what you had in mind. Uh, so you want to go with the intentions. Um, that's not what uh, I had in mind, actually. Not what you had in mind? No. Um, we have, um, my experience has been that we start with a, um, a different approach. A different approach. Right. So instead of starting with the intentions, we start with um, outcomes. Outcomes. Okay. So the tool I was using there was an echo question. That if you echo the words that the person has said, not the entire sentence, 
not an outcome, just, just the critical words, and then you are quiet again, they will tend to speak more and go deeper into that which is the cause of what they said. And I did two echo questions in there, and we got a bit more information from it. I haven't really felt that. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about, so I'm struggling to yeah. up with any, but I could feel how I was just like given a chance to, to go if I wanted to. Right, yeah. right. There was another tool that I did here, and this is one that will feel a little actory. I want to acknowledge that. Um, it's called a stroke. And a stroke is a positive reinforcement for a behavior that you want to see repeated. The behavior that I wanted to see repeated is that you identified what it was that you did want to focus on outcomes. And the way in which I did that was to say it with a heightened, oh, to focus on outcomes. Feel how there's a, got it, right, po that there's a, I'm with you, that you provide that kind of a, okay. You can even do it without language. You can do it just through facial and body affect. Let's go back to that moment saying uh, focus on outcomes. So I'm listening. Yeah, so I was thinking we would focus instead on the outcomes. Yeah. Do you feel how my body lifted up and m my face kind of lightened a bit? Even just that will make them go, oh, good. He gets it. And the more there is a sense of, the f of you getting it, the more ready they will be to communicate. It's ironic that people tend to shut down speaking when they feel like you're not getting what they're saying. So if you can find things that make it feel like, oh, I get it, that will make them feel like, cool, I can explain it more to you now. So uh, we've got echo questions. Oh, we, actually, allow room, echo questions, and strokes. Those are three things that if, if you were to apply that kind of thing in an engagement with somebody, that there would be a likelihood that you would have better, you would be more on a common ground with them. The other thing that's really important is that if they put forward something that's not your deal, you don't move into defense. If you move into defense, that causes them to move into defense as well. Wait, outcomes, that that's really needs to be the result. Yeah, we want to sell stuff. That's what we care about. Do you feel how by, push, by pushing on the thing that you don't agree with, it makes them get more firmly in their point of view? A more effective way to get there is to go with them on that. In karate, if somebody's coming like this and you're going to block, you block by putting up an arm like that. In Aikido, if somebody comes like this, you bring your hand around behind it and redirect the energy. If you come on it, at it head on, that is just going to make pain for both of you. But if you can join them in the place that they are, you are harnessing that energy, and eventually you can then bring it to an aspect of what you are trying to achieve in terms of your communication. So it's another technique for making it so that you can get to the same page, not by forcing somebody, but by joining them, that co-creative act. I'd like to ask two questions. Go for it. Uh, the first concept you called by two different names, to, to my ear. You okay. called it uh, one thought, one sentence, and then you called it giving space or something. So, uh, to allow, to allow room is, is to not just keep blabbing on. A way to allow room is one thought, one sentence. There are other ways to allow room. There are. Uh, like leveraging the silence. <laughs> <laughs> and when we both know that we're playing that, then it doesn't work particularly effectively. But 
when, when you are working in communication and you know that there is something, or you feel that there is something more inside of that person that has yet to come out, putting forward something that's the invitation and then letting that silence stand in the same way that I did with you when you were going, I don't really know what we're talking about, but I got to come up with something. And if you want a really handy way to do it, when you start to feel uncomfortable in your brain, go 1001, 1002. 1003 and then you can speak Because the point at which you're feeling uncomfortable they're feeling uncomfortable And if you hold those three additional seconds you are more likely to be able to hear something coming from them Than coming from you and that's where you're going to get the useful information is from them Cool cool. I have another question. Yes Let's say you go home for Thanksgiving and you have cantankerous uncle with very strong political opinions that are different than yours. <laughs> if, maybe if he's an unwilling partner, you can't have the conversation at all, but what of these things could help facilitate some bonding as opposed to yep. loggerheads? Yep. I'm going to sit down for this. Cool. That's fine. Um, and, and this is also true in terms of people going... Uh, Having going, th we 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 need to use this approach to the programming. Like there, there's not one way to achieve things that you can really get bumping heads like that. Um, with a person who is intentionally contentious, one way to do it is to look for the truth within what they say. Not everything. But if, if it's going, you know, man, every, you know, all these people are just trying to get off on easy street, you know, have money just handed out to them. Is there a truth, some element in there that is a truth that you could concur with? It doesn't have to be the entire thought. Yeah, I mean, a lot of statements I would concur with if uh, they were just were in absolute statements. If they said some people do. So being able to then go, yeah, there are definitely people who, for whom that's the case. Mm -hmm. If you have that's not going, you're not buying in with all people. You're going, that's true. So going, yeah, the agile process can be very useful. It's not saying it's the process we're going to use now. But if you can find a place that is in alignment with somebody that you actually disagree with, it makes it harder to do this. My grandfather used to say, you can't chase a person who will not run. If you don't engage in the other half of this, there is no longer this. And if you can actually get on the other side of it, that allows you to then join them. And once you have joined them, they have a greater likelihood of being able to connect with what you do. So, um, so we, we've got about five more minutes here, and I want to make sure that, that, you, that you do go out out of here with something useful because I really am not a big fan of just inspiration because inspiration fades but tools are forever so is there one other thing that would be useful to you tonight so I would like to know then um, I'd like to know from four people tonight something that you are walking away with that you can actually use. Echoing. Echoing? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, and I'll give you another one that's because it's, ha it's a handy add-on. The why question. <laughs> I wasn't being a smart man. No, no, no. Be, and the reason is because it causes people to give what sits underneath the answer that they just gave. Mm -hmm. It's got to be done without attitude. If it's done, why? 
that will, that will shut people down, but to do it with curiosity. Why? That, like, with the expectation of, oh, there's something good here, that that gets you cool stuff. So you've got the echo question, and you've got a why question. Thank you. Yeah. What else? What else are you walking away with tonight? Yeah. The idea of an app as a persona or as a character that is interacting with your user. Yeah. Nice. That's two. We've got two to go. And can you see how that can work in a digital realm, too? That we have control over how much rolls out, right? So instead of going, here's a whole bunch of information, being able to give enough, and not just enough so that you click to have it next thing. Because a click, does that give you much information back from them? But if you can find a way so that, what, like now we ha they've got, what's Apple got the touch, the sensitive pressure stuff? You press the screen a certain so hardness. Touch. What's that? The force touch. I think. Force touch, yeah. Now we're starting to get into things that are semi, uh, mimic analog, right? And so being able to utilize the degree of pressure as a kind of information, like a data point, that allows the app to then respond in a way that is responding not just to the fact of the touch, but the pressure of the touch. Cool. What was the tool that I used that actually caused you to speak up? There you go. Leveraging with silence. Yep. Cool. So we got three. Last one, and then we're done. Who's counting the three inside their head? <laughs> Shall we leave it with three tonight? I don't want to force something. If it isn't there, that's cool. We'll leave it at three. All right. Well, I know that this is not your traditional <laughs> methodology. And I truly appreciate your at least willingness to consider, not necessarily adopt, but to consider a process that, um, that looks at the humanity side in terms of how does that help us make better the technology that we craft. So I thank you very much for that openness to that possibility. And what you choose to do with that, that's you. And thanks for the invitation to be here tonight. Much appreciated. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.